Welcome to the Time Warner Arena in Charlotte, North Carolina. It's time for NASCAR's best pit crews to bask in the much-deserved spotlight. Let's meet tonight's competitors. For the introductions, we go to Doug Rice. Pit crew fans, it's time. Let's meet the teams in tonight's NASCAR Sprint Pit Crew Challenge. Up first, please welcome the number 18 M&M's Toyota team from Joe Gibbs Racing and the 21 Good Sam's Camping World Ford team from Wood Brothers Racing. Next up is the number 20 Home Depot Dollar General Toyota team from Gibbs Racing competing against the number 5 Farmers Insurance Chevrolet team from Hendrick Motorsports. Competing third tonight is the number two Miller Lite Dodge team from Pinsky Racing and the number 24 DuPont Chevrolet team from Hendrick Motorsports. Next up is the number 55 Aaron's Dream Machine Toyota team from Michael Walter Racing and the number 51 Phoenix Construction Services Chevrolet from Phoenix Racing. Now let's meet the number 99 Fasten All Four team from Roush Fenway Racing. They will go head to head with the number 34 NHP Power Pack Pudding Ford team from Front Row Motorsports. Competing six is your recent Martinsville winner, the number 39 U.S. Army Quick and Loan Chevrolet team from Stuart Haas Racing. And the 2009 NASCAR Sprint Pit Crew champions, the number 31 Caterpillar Chevrolet team from Richard Childress Motorsports. Next, we have the number 27 Menard Chevrolet team from Richard Childress Racing. They're going up against the number 9 Stanley Ford team from Richard Petty Motorsports. Now we'll have the number 15 Five Hour Energy team from Richard Childress Racing competing against the number 78 Furniture Row Racing team. Our eighth seed tonight is the number 56 Napa Auto Parts Toyota team from Michael Waltrip Racing. Tonight's seventh seed team is the number 29 Budweiser Chevrolet from Richard Childress Racing. In the sixth seed, we'll have the number 14 Office Depot Mobile One Chevrolet team from Stuart Haas Racing. And the fifth seed, let's hear it for the number 16, 3M4 team from Roush Fenway Racing. In the fourth seed, please welcome the number 17, fifth third bank 14 from Roush Fenway Racing. The third seed tonight, the number 88 National Guard Mountain Dew Chevrolet team from Hendrick Motorsports. Our second seed team tonight is our 2010-2011 NASCAR Sprint Pit Crew Challenge Champions, the number 11 FedEx Office Toyota team from Joe Gibbs Racing. And they just gave Hendrick Motorsports their 200th win. Your number one seed tonight, the number 48 Milo Chevrolet team.
the teams have all been introduced. They have walked the course when they come back next time. Guns will be a blazing. They'll be on the clock. Who will be the best team in 2012? We'll find out next. It's been said that racers aren't true athletes. The same has been said about dancers. But just one look at the intricate choreography of Pit Road proves this ballet requires more precision, more speed, and more stone-cold courage than any end zone run. Back him up, back him up. Here comes a sliding ball in the heart, and the crew goes right to work. From the early days of sneakers and cigarettes, the art of the pit stop has evolved into a 12-second symphony that can make a race or break the spirit. So what makes pit crews both artists and athletes? See for yourself as the 2012 NASCAR Sprint Pit Crew Challenge is about to begin. And welcome once again to Charlotte, North Carolina and Time Warner Arena. Well, 24 teams made up of six individuals, all fighting for bragging rights tonight. But that's not all that is on the line. They are also fighting for the number one pit stall for Saturday night's all-star race. So a lot on the line, not only bragging rights, that pit stall, but also a lot of money for the individuals as well as the teams. For more on the competition, let's go to the big board and Bob Dillner. Rick, this place will be electrified in just a little while with elimination rounds but it was rocking a little earlier with a seeding round and that was to lock in the top eight in sprint cup series points they get a bye to the second round but we saw a lot of penalties in fact martin Truex jr's team more than 20 seconds of penalties only three teams out of that eight penalty free among them for all the ladies out there, Dale Earnhardt Jr., he was third, but the top seed, numero uno, the 48 boys of Jimmy Johnson. But I want you to keep an eye out for the team that qualified second in that seeding round, the two-time defending champions, Denny Hamlin. They're hoping to be right here in the middle of the scoreboard as the first three-time champions of the Sprint Pit Crew Challenge. These guys, pure athletes, Matt Clark. Thanks, Bob. We're going to see these guys roll right behind us. It is all about athleticism. This event may very well be determined by how athletic this Jackman is. He is going to have to sprint 40 yards up the tarmac and push 40 yards back. The big issue is that they have to get that car moving and they have to get it moving fast. Guys, it doesn't really matter unless that you get this car going. The big issue tonight is that you have to make sure you don't have penalties. Larry, Jeff, you cannot out push a penalty. Well, Matt, we see that every year in this competition where penalties send these guys home. In a five or six hundred mile race, you may can overcome a penalty. But here tonight, a mistake or too slow, single elimination, you go to the house. And Jeff, that's where the 11 team of Joe Gibbs Racing, they've been so strong the last two years. No mistakes, but working as a team. Working as a team, Larry, and you see right there the push. That is where it's going to really come from. And Matt was talking about it, how important that is. Don't make mistakes. Don't put yourself in a box. And it all comes down to everybody working together and driving to make sure it all happens. But, you know, that's doing it right, folks. Every now and then we have things that don't go right. Earlier tonight in front of the competition, we saw Curtis Thompson, the rear tire changer. He got literally thrown by Jeff, Justin Eldridge, Eldridge, the carrier, over the wall, and he got hung up on the, on the button as far as the timer is concerned. That's the kind of mistake you can't afford tonight because it takes away from the whole team. You've got to have that athleticism, excuse me. But I want to bring up athletes, talk about athletes. We've got one right now working with us tonight. Rick Allen, glad to have him part of the team. Back at the media challenge in 2008, he showed you what he was made out of. He used to be in the Catholic League. You can see right now, he has a great amount of athleticism because he's a jack man and he's ready to go. But in 2011, he does it again. Can you believe how talented this guy is? He can get it done. It don't make a difference what is going on. Great with the push. They're having a winning competition right here with the media challenge. And Rick, can you, are you ready to go tonight? Have you got your A game on? Well, Jeff, I'm blushing now. I'm, I'm glad there's not a camera on me because of, I'm blushing because of all that hype. But let's learn uh, who the guys are on each team. We start off with the 18 team, the gas man, Tom Lampy. Then it's Nick O'Dell, Bradley Donaghy, Jake Seminera, 
Kenny Barber and Jeff Fender make up the six man team for the 18 team. The 21 bunch, that's Mike Smith, Corey Baldwin, Brian Thomas, Dwayne Ogles, Garrett Redding, and Jeremy Neely. They're the six men that will show their athleticism as well as go head to head in this competition. Single elimination, if you lose, you're out. There you see the Jackman, Jeremy Neely, with the Wood Brothers. The Jackman will be the first person to the car, the first one over there. He's the one that gets that car rolling, but what I'm seeing, the 18 car got it rolling much sooner than the 21 Wood Brothers. Oh, this, this game's already over with, and we talked about the push, if there's no mistakes, the 18 clearly gets the job done right now at a pretty good time, guys, 22.76. Yeah, Jeff, a great point you brought up. If there's no mistakes, we only saw three teams in the early rounds that went mistake for I'm seeing a, a five-second five penalty on the Jackman of the 18 team of Joe Gibbs Racing. That would be Jeff Fender. So that would at least jack the number up to 27 and, seconds. And what that means, if it's on the Jackman, he did not get the car up off the ground. Both right side or both left side tires have got to clear, no matter which side it is, Rick. And we're hearing the 21 team clean of penalties. That means that they will advance. And again, in this first round, it is an individual competition. We talked about how they were hitting the buttons earlier. They are on the clock for the individual competition in this first round. There you see Nick O'Dell, the front tire changer for the 18 team. He's won the individual title three times. Yeah, and he's also won an all-around, I mean, the competition in 2005 with the nine group here. The thing is, guys, we keep talking about it. Matt Clark talked about it. You cannot beat a penalty. And uh, uh, one like that, I mean, it's just so hard to overcome when the other group is perfect. And that's what this is all about. You see all the crew members in this round here pushing that button. That's for the individual time. Again, they'll have to push the buttons through this round. The front eight or the top eight in this competition, there was a seating round earlier. Those top eight were the top eight from the owner's point standings, and they were getting a bye in this first round. So the top eight got a bye, and now we're determining the remainder of the field as we move forward. And so again, it looks as though the 21 team is going to advance out of this first competition between the 18 and the 21. I'd rather be lucky than good, but I'd also rather be penalty free. Penalty free is, is very critical in this competition. So again, next up, the next two competitors coming down the line, the five and the 20 teams. They'll stage their cars, get them ready. We've got a few different drivers that are joining these teams. A uh, little bit of fun for family and friends that are able to take advantage of this. Driving the five team will be Ronnie Simpka, and in the 20 car will be Max McLaughlin. Max weighs Mike. a total of 100 pounds. <laughs> you want a light driver because that, that crew's they're having to push that driver as well. There's the, uh, the driver actual driver. driver. Yeah, Joe Logano. Joe Logano here to cheer yeah. on his team, which is a lot of fun. One gas can man. In years past, we have had seven people go over the wall because you used to have a catch can. Yeah. In the old gas, the way we used to do the gassing. And now, because there is a vented system, we only have one gas man. So there's only six guys pushing the car now. So it really puts an added load on everybody as far as that's concerned, especially the jack man, because he's the guy you always kind of count on to get this thing going because he's supposed to be the biggest bruiser on this team as far as... <laughs> size and strength is concerned well and again size does matter when it when you're talking about a gas man because you've got to come in at the right angle so that you don't spill any of the gas and we see the driver of the of the number 11 team he's kind of hanging out watching well he's watched his team win two consecutive picture championships jeff gordon looks on a hendrick team has never won the sprint pit crew challenge and you know what's interesting you look at jeff gordon you think about in years past the guys who were really i guess famous as far as, far as pit crews were the rainbow warriors and we'll introduce the 20 team now the gas man john eicher then it's john royer joe crossan chris taylor eric groen and jason tate they make up the 20 team on the other side of the aisle will be the five team and that's chris Vasolka, kelly kellis 
Michael Oxidine, Kip Wolfmeyer, Ben Fishbeck, and Jeff Carr. One thing I noticed at reading the bio of all these crew members for the five team, every one of them in their spare time, which is not much, <laughs> they love to hunt. They do. And, and that's something that I think goes hand in hand. Jeff, Man, what's you wrong look like with you guys? You like hey, I saying. thought everybody hunted. <laughs> hey, you can join us on the broadcast and join in the conversation. All you have to do is when you're tweeting, just include the hashtag Sprint All Star. And again, this kicks off Sprint All Star Week on Speed. We have got plenty of coverage of everything that's taking place place not only with the sprint pit crew challenge but also everything taking place at the track tomorrow watch the focus on these guys watch each one of them they're getting ready to get themselves zoned out knowing what they've got to do we're going to see a lot of emotion coming out of their faces tonight because guess what they're not wearing helmets we can see their faces a lot of intensity and right when that buzzer goes off, I think the nerves go away and it takes over what they've practiced so many times. Saw the Jackman for the five team, Jeff Carr, get to that car. He's getting there way before the Jackman, Jason Tate of the 20 team. And boy, that five team, they get that car moving and rolling. And now can they get it going out? They're still missing some crew members. Can they pick up the pace and hang off, hold off the 20 crew? Pretty good time for the five team, 22.975 unofficially. We're going to be checking to make sure there wasn't any penalties. It looks like there is at least a five-second penalty on the five team in the gas area. And I'm seeing it also on the 20 car, too. So over here, I'm seeing a five-second penalty here, which will help negate the one against the... Uh, yeah, the five and the five. They're yeah. going to counter the five and the 20. Now, a big... I tell you what was very impressive right now. The Jagman, Jeff Carr, just posted the best time of 5.291 seconds. But that's the reason you can't quit. Even if you know you've made a mistake, you can't quit because the other team may, may make more mistakes. Well, here we go again, guys, talking about, you know, keeping it clean. And you see, that's what happened right there. It was not a good connection right there with the five car. A lot of fuel loss. They now have over 10 seconds of penalties right there. 11 seconds as a matter of fact. I talked about a great number for the Jackman there, Jeff Carr. The fastest anyone has ever done this competition from the Jackman position was done last year by Mike Casto, who is the Jackman for the 14 car, and he did it in 5.071 seconds. So a very quick time for the Jackman. Kip Wolfmeyer, the rear tire changer for Casey King's number five team. No, we saw that gas spilling, but that's not actually gas. It's colored water. The, the coloring is snow cone coloring. The first two have advanced. The 21 and the 20 team will move on to the next round. Speed's presentation of the NASCAR Sprint Pit Crew Challenge is brought to you by Mobile One, the world's leading synthetic motor oil brand, Mobile One. By Turtle Wax. Keep your car cleaner, longer, with new Turtle Wax Ice, the smarter way to shine. And by AC Pro. Your car's AC blowing hot air? Get AC Pro, the 10-minute cold air solution. It's definitely not a game come Saturday night. The stars come out and the gloves will come off for the NASCAR Sprint All-Star Race, and you'll only see it right here on Speed. See NASCAR's best square off in an all-or-nothing million-dollar brawl. That's the NASCAR Sprint All-Star Race, Saturday, 7 Eastern, only on Speed. One thing about this competition, if you win this competition tonight, you get the number one pit selection for that all-star race. That's going to be huge. Oh, yeah, how big is that because of the way they have changed the format of the all-star race? Getting that preferred position could be the difference between being second or first and a million-dollar winner. That's how big it is. Especially with a mandatory stop before right. those final ten laps. Yeah, that's going to be pivotal. You know, we talk about how much this competition is worth. $80,000 becomes Saturday night. Again, $1 million on the line. Anything this team can do to help themselves, that's a plus. Let's introduce the 24 team. Travis Gordon, Corey DeMarco, Dion Williams, Chad Ibrett, Gene Cornwall, and Bailey Walker making up the 24 team. On the other side of the barrier, the two team. The gas man, Nick Hens Hensley, Ben Brown, Scott Reiniger, David Mayo, Larry Robinette, and Braxton Brannon, the six men that will push that 3,200-pound car 40 yards at the end of doing their individual talents. Now, interesting drivers. Brad Keselowski's actually in the two car, and in place of Jeff Gordon is John Allen Gustafson, which is Allen Gustafson, the crew right. chief's young son. 
And the next competition about to get underway. They're in their ready positions. I like Leo's hat. <laughs> Kind well, of reminds you that one Bear Bryant used to wear, doesn't it? Yeah, the hounds too. I think it helps when mom's a modern. Oh, problems with the jack already early with the Miller Light team. Chad Everett, Gene Cornwell on the rear of the two car. I'm sorry, that's on the rear of the 24 car. Yeah, Braxton Brandon had problems with that two getting it jacked up. We'll see if they can make up the difference. A very oh, tight man. start for the push. Here we go. The push is going to come down. Who winds up winning? It's the 24. It's coming on. Coming it's on. coming on. Time. That's going to be so oh, close. That one separated by 68 one thousandths of a second. That 24 Woo. came on about the last 10 yards. It did. Now it goes, as we like to say, to the scorecard. To the penalties. We'll yep. see if there are penalties for either team. I'm seeing all clean over here for the 24 team. And if it's clean, the two team is going to advance because of that 68 one thousandth of I'm a second. I'm seeing a penalty on the two over there. And we are getting a five second penalty coming from the gas man, as well as a three second penalty from the front tire change. And that probably means a loose slug nut there. And I don't think this is the first competition where we've seen a lot of penalties in the area of the gas man. And I think just right. trying to get that, they're dumping 17 gallons. I just think they're getting in too big of a hurry. And again, a penalty free run for the 24 team. And that's the way you advance in this competition. You've got to go without mistakes. But as we mentioned, mistakes, Nick we have a problem with the two. Good on the first. Good on the second right there. I mean, there's no gas spillage. But, but maybe, maybe he did. Did. Maybe he didn't get it all the way out either. Oh. I talked about how we had an issue oh. early with the Jackman. Braxton, Braxton Brandon. Brandon. <laughs> but guys, looking at that. Here's the finish right here. Look at the two car, how close it really was. Unbelievable and a disappointment for the Miller Light team. Very tough situation to have to deal with. Let's go back down to the arena floor and Bob Dilner. Third pit crew competition for Corey DeMarco. He's the front tire changer for the 24. That was a heck of a finish. I want to know you pushing that race car. Were you looking at the other lane to see how close they were? I was initially. I mean, I, I saw them out of the corner of my eye when I jumped over the wall. You know, this whole deal is about no mistakes. I got over the right side and when I pulled the tire up kind of knocked the gun between my legs so at that point the individual is out the window and it's just all about the team 100 percent so I knew we were probably a little bit behind I just tried to make sure we didn't have any penalties and uh, you know fortunately they made some mistakes and we were able to to come out with it so great rebound by Corey DeMarco on that run for the 24 bunch guys thanks Bob coming up next it's the 55 and 51 teams that will take to the stage and once again Go back and talk about the athleticism and these guys recognizing situations, thinking on their feet. He pretty much summed it up. I realized I was done. I am now got to worry about my team. That's right. Speaking of worrying about your team, Mark Martin here to cheer on the 55 bunch. Mark Martin has really put that 55 team in a great position to potentially make the chase based on over points. And you know, I love the rear tire changer for Mark Martin's team, Shannon Myers. He played in the NFL for the Miami Dolphins, and he relates it to being on a NASCAR pit crew, a lot to playing in the NFL. He said, when you get to the top of any sport, everything gets faster. Failure is not an option. It's not an option, and especially in this competition, we're seeing it. Failure isn't an option if you want to advance because we've seen anybody that has penalties ends up shooting themselves in the foot, not able to get advancing to the next round. We want to introduce our pit crew members, starting with the 55 team. Brian Deal on the gas, Ryan Langley, Chris Hall, Shannon Myers, as you mentioned, rear tire changer, Mark Kennerly, and Tony Carm or Cardamone is doing the Jackman duties on the other side of the line. The 51 team. Gas man, Tim Whalen. Front tire changer, Anthony O'Brien. Art Simmons. Cameron Waugh. Jeff Knight and Eric Ludwig make up that six man team. Je Eric, actually a defensive lineman for Elon University. Now, if you notice, these guys, they have the HendrickCars.com, but this crew is trained by Hendrick Motorsports. And we look at the gas, obviously, that's going to be a very pivotal point. We've seen it, but they're using the old style gas cans still. Yep. 
they are again it's just part of makes it easier for the competition right. here a better job that's something they're used to working with as well as it helps them in this competition the way it vents compared to the new style right at the moment did you see the focus on brian deal's face getting ready for this competition focused oh, yeah. on one thing that. that gas hole Again, nine gallons in each can. He's got to get 17 and a half there. gallons into the tank. Ryan Langley on the front for the 55 team. Great shot here. Had a little trouble getting that tire off. 51, 51 cars got it going around him. But look at the 55. They're coming back. They're, They're coming, coming back. Here's the push. Yeah, they make it right there. The 51 crosses the stripe first, 23.591 seconds. Another close battle. It's going to come back down to the penalty points. If there is penalty time, that has to be tacked on. Yeah, we're hearing possibly on the 51 team. I know they're weighing the gas cans now. Yeah, they're looking at the gas man on the 51, a five-second penalty. So you tack that on. And it looks as though the 55 team is going to advance. And what they do, they weigh these fuel cans. The two cans combined, 17 gallons. They weigh them before and after. And if you have more left in there than you're supposed to, then it's a, certainly a penalty. And, Larry, that's been probably the Achilles heel of most of the teams throughout this entire competition since we started. We take a look here. There's a 24 gas band or 51 right there gas band. And that's there's there a mistake. Right there. That's yeah. excessive loss of fuel right there spilling. And, and you know, Jeff, I just wonder, could one thing that's throwing these guys, you can see just how close yeah, these gas men occur. This is still the old uh, fuel receiver and not the one they're using now. But the thing is, Larry, they have practice and they have practice and they have practice. So they should be familiar with it and understand what they got to do. Bob Dillner. Back to the short track days. Mark Martin would always tell you, you got to be fast, but you also got to be consistent and good. And that's what your boys were right there. How proud of you are you of them advancing to the next round? Well, it's awesome. These guys are so fantastic on the Aaron's team, and everybody at MWR works really hard at these pit stops. And I'm, I, you know, I'm proud of them. You can't go fast enough to overcome a penalty. And, you know, so. The guys are on it, they make no mistakes, and they're fast, and I look forward to seeing them in the next round. All right, Mark Martin down here to root on his boys. It's not just all about speed down here. You have to be consistent. We have a lot more from the first round here at the... Welcome back. The next competition to take place, the 99 and the 34 will face off to find out who will advance into the next round. Sticky fingers? Well, that might help out in this competition. Yeah, it's kind of like the, you might want to hang on that air race. Might be a pretty good thing right there. <laughs> Let's take a look at the 99 team. Joe Karasinski will be the gas man. Mike Lingerfeld, Alan Troutman, Kale Uphoff, Josh Shiplett, and Dennis Killian. Dennis, a new father, one month ago. So hopefully Dennis is young and here to watch. On the 34 team, we've got Justin Lagos, Lages, excuse me, Austin Dickey, A.J. Heaster, Chris Letourneau, Mike Keels, and William Sturgill. Again, what a great competition where family, friends, neighbors all get to come out to cheer on these gladiators. But look at Joe Karasinski, the gas man. What a great story on Joe. He's a cancer survivor, yep. and now he here is fueling, fueling this 99 car. There's Carl Edwards. Bob Osmond right in behind him, crew chief on the 99. Cheering on their team. Take a look at the front tire changers. Mike Winger felt for the 99. Remember that he was with the 48 team and he won five championships as a tire changer for them. Now over here on the 99 team. Austin Dickey, the front tire changer for the 34 team. Pretty even. 99 team got to their car way before the 34. It looks like a blowout if there isn't penalties. So the 99 team, a great run, 24.055 seconds. They were able to get to the car, get it going quicker. Then that 34 team, it looks clean on the 99's run. We'll take one more look through there. All clean on the on the 99. A little over a second difference because of the push, but there on the 34, we've got a three-second penalty. Looks like that may have been in the area of a, of a lug nut penalty. We're also seeing a five-second penalty in the gas man for the 34. So front tire changer gets a three-second penalty, and gas man for the 34, a five-second penalty. Look at Big penalty. Joe right there. 
you have to believe these gas men are seeing the mistakes that's being made by the teams before them, making sure you get all of that fuel in there with no spillage. Look at the rear tire changer and carrier. Great camera location. You're looking exactly what they're looking at. Chris Letourneau. And what a shot. We talk about athletes. The 99 team has got an athlete driving this car as well. He's standing by with Bob. Carl Edwards, that's right. He's fit and trim down here watching his boys advance to the next round. Uh, what do you think? They go against the defending two-time champions the next round, but your overall thoughts on their performance in the first round? My guys are looking good. That's uh, that's cool. I, I, was, uh, I was talking to them beforehand. They're all calm, and then uh, that buzzer went off, and they went after it. So it's really neat for us to be able to stand up here and watch. You know, I, I forget how fast these guys are. You know, um, Langerfeld just, just went by. I mean, He's unbelievable, Kale up off, and, and um, it was so neat just to, to watch Dennis Killian do the jacking, how fast he is. Um, we don't get to see that, you know, we're focused in the car so often. You more nervous than they were, or vice versa? Yeah, I was a little nervous. I kind of, I was like uh, Ricky Bobby, I didn't know what to do with my hands. I'm like, I don't know, I don't want to cheer real loud, I don't want to look real stupid, but um, that's really exciting to see him do that. Uh, I don't, you don't see Haas. I don't know if you guys got a slow mo replay of Haas, our gas man. He was running, he was hustling. You don't see him do that very often, so I'm proud of him. I tell you what, those boys got to the car quick and advanced the 99 car to the second round. All smiles for their driver, Carl Edwards, and his team advance to the next round. Chrissy Newman behind the wheel of the 39 car. Soon, mother to be. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> right. For the her, second time, her Chrissy and her Newman. passenger there. <laughs> expecting mother Chrissy Newman and there is the expecting father Ryan Newman the driver of the number 39 team and daughter Brooklyn the big sister here shortly <laughs> that's right there's the old man right there Tony gets every time you come up to talk to Tony Gibson what do you want old man <laughs> everybody's old man, old man. Right there's Kim Burton she'll be driving the 31 out. car Look way out in front of you. for this competition and she's a veteran behind the wheel. Yeah, I think Absolutely. she's driven this 31 car about every year or whatever car Jeff was driving. There you see the driver, Jeff Burton, as he watches on. Daughter Paige beside him. He's not sure. All right, thanks so much, guys. Let's head back to the floor for some more pizza. I'm here with Kim Burton. Kim, you've done this a number of times. Are you nervous tonight? Um, I'm nervous. I don't want to screw up their hard work, but... Um, I know that they've prepared well, and I'm really excited for them to have the opportunity to showcase their good stuff. How important is it to you to do your job and, and get these guys down the, down the track without any issues? My biggest job is just to keep it straight and not hit that wall at the end down there. I don't want to mess up their speedway car. I noticed they had a custom seat made for you. It's a pillow. Did you grab it from the house or what? No, it's got foam in it from the race shop, but they just put it in there to, to make sure it stayed exactly where they wanted it. Guys, she can ride a horse, but she can also drive a race car here at the Pit Crew Competition. She's got the bling going, the watches, yeah, she's the, not kind of the bracelet. She's quite the equestrian. Yeah, let's take a look at the 39 team. Andy Rieger will be the gas man. Scott Rosowski on the front tire changer. Brad Robison, Jonathan Sherman, Rick James Hauk, and Andy Turner making up your 39 team. On the 31 side, John Wallace, Tim Sheets, J.D. Holcomb, Zach Price, Ethan Marquette, and Andrew Childers. Set. Back underway. Who will advance to the next round between the 39 and 31 team? There you see Kim Sheets, his claim. I'm the fastest fat guy you've ever seen. <laughs> we'll try now. Right now. 39 guys to their car first. Looks like we might have a gas fill on the 31. We'll wait for an official to give us the ruling on that. But the 39 has a pretty good lead right now, about two feet. Can they make it up? Oh, uh, but the 39 himself. has already got a penalty on their side right there in the gas area. The whole problem with the 31 team, they couldn't get any traction when they first started trying to push that car. We have a penalty on the 31 team, but when they crossed the stripe, it was three one thousandths of a second that separated those two cars. Now you saw that five second penalty with the 31 with the FS, that means a false start. False he start. left his box too early. So we're seeing some penalties being assessed to these teams and it looks like the 31 team the gas man got a five second penalty the rear tire changer a three second penalty it's john wallace that is the pressure right now guys you got to worry about it's the pressure you're seeing coming down on these guys because normally larry they wouldn't make this kind of mistake front tire changer tim sheets fastest so far at a 13.615 in the individual competition 
and it looks as though even though the penalties on the 31, the 39 had 15 second penalties. But and see, so the 31 is going to advance. Well, the whole problem there is he didn't let the car down. And there you see Andy Rieger. Uh, he's been a very public figure over the last <laughs> week since Darlington. <laughs> well, emotions run high in this sport, not only between drivers, but also crews. And we talk about how tight it weighs. This one separated by three one thousandths of a second when they crossed the stripe. But it came down to penalty seconds that advances the 31. Bob Dilder. Tim Sheets, as Larry McReynolds said, calls himself the fastest fat guy you've ever seen. Well, you were pretty darn quick there. How about your boys in this round? And a great time for you so far with your position. Yeah, man, you just got to be smooth and fast, and, you know. We just don't practice too much, just trying to keep it simple. My carrier, you know, he's he's a big part of it, you know. We work really good, and so that's what I mean, fat's where it's at. He's not fat, he's athletic, guys. Thanks, Bob. Pretty impressive run so far. We have two more spots to go to find out who will advance to the next round. Stay with us. Tomorrow, All-Star Week on Speed slams into Charlotte with the biggest Fast Friday ever. Grab a seat, get comfortable, because Speed is cranking with 12 consecutive hours of live Sprint Cup and Camping World Truck Series coverage you can't get anywhere else. By the way, guys, I'll start that coverage, and I'll end that coverage tomorrow. It's a long day, and it's going to be a lot of fun. So you're like a bookend, right? I am a bookend. That's right. 10.30, starting it off tomorrow morning and we'll end up at 10 30 as the checkered flag will fly for the truck race and qualifying for the sprint all-star race unique qualifying format these boys will be involved in that qualifying that's right let's introduce the nine team robert smith the gas man aaron powell lance hannah justin fiedler eric wallace and rodney fetters on that nine team Paul Menard's number 27 team has Cruz Gonzalez, Terry Spaulding, Eric Pringle, Aaron Smith, Ray Wrights, and a Kerry Wimber. <laughs> Kerry's a guy that enjoys yoga, boating, and motorcycles. Huh, what I found funny was Aaron Smith putting on the bottom of his little resume here. I've been on fire several times during the course <laughs> of a pit stop. Not sometimes a good position yeah. for a rear tire changer. Now you see the front carrier there for the nine. That's Lance Hanna. He's actually the front carrier for the 43 team because Joe right. Cornell, the normal front tire carrier, was injured at Darlington last Saturday night. Was he bull riding? Yeah, I was going to say he used to be a bull, bull rider, rider and he gets injured racing. Okay. I guess that can happen. All right, let's find out who advances between these two teams, the 9 and the 27, head-to-head. -head. And the thing about it, Rick, we talked about some of these changes, the last minute substitutions. Sometimes they can throw off the rhythm of everything. As you watch the big sprint right now going down here, as far as the guys are concerned, not a good exchange right there as far as that tire change. I think we're seeing a lot of gas spillage. Boy, that nine team, Richard Petty Motorsports, started off behind, but they will win as far as the 40-yard push. We'll just have to check those penalties. A big push by the nine team. We're hearing that a penalty on the 27 team in the gas man department. So a five-second penalty being shown there. I'm all green here on the nine. So Paul Menard smiles, but it looks like that'll be the end for the 27 team's night as far as the pit crew challenge goes. Take a look at this, the gas man for the 27 team. That's Cruz Gonzalez. Now, he's there, not the, the normal spill. fuel man yeah. for the 27 team. Normally, Matt Pruder had some issues. He could not be here tonight. They're trying to get going. Whoa. Slips could have been from the fuel that's the spilled fuel out. out there. Yep, the colored water. Right. Yeah, it is a non-flammable liquid that they are putting in the cars. So it looks as though the nine team will advance. We have one spot remaining. But first, let's go to Bob Dilder. Rodney Fetters pumped up. He's the jack man for the nine bunch. Are you guys underdogs or favorites as we move ahead in this competition? Bob, to be the oldest jack man here, got to be an underdog. But the team I have behind me on this nine Stanley Ford, they're going to push their hearts out. No penalties, clean run, and push. It's basically what gets you to the next round for everybody. I want to say hi to uh, Kyle Stinson. He's one of our brothers on our team. Ms. White, we're having a tough time right now with her baby. Kyle, thinking of you. We love you, brother. Next round, let's go. 
Oh, Rodney Fetters, 42 years old, been doing it for 14 years. I'm telling you, these guys are serious. I taught that boy everything he knows. <laughs> I love to hear it, Jeff. Love to hear it. You know, one of the technical things that I appreciate about this, this sport, there are so many different things that different styles of athletes can be good at. Wrestlers can be great at being a tire changer, the eye-hand coordination, being nimble, getting down and having to be right there in the heat of things. Baseball players. It Baseball players, and great. Coordination. There's so many things you can take from the sport right now that really can help you get through this competition. And, Matt, you've been down there. You've tried to recruit these kind of guys. There's, there's some really phenomenal guys out there on that floor tonight. Absolutely. It has really come down to getting athletes on your team so that way you can perform at events like this and also all along the season. I am at Command Central. No race, even a pit crew competition, does not go off without a lot, lot of technology, officials, timing, and soaring. This is where it all happens. These folks right here post the penalties on the board they read the paddles they're the ones that give us the immediate feedback of how our teams are doing i'm standing back behind the gas man been a lot of spillage with these old redheads but guys they have to get it uh clean so they can get to the car and get the push done guys thanks matt now the next competition here this will face off against the 88 team whoever wins this will face off against the 88 team in the next round so we continue to show the single elimination of this competition if you lose you are eliminated we take a look at the fight the 15 team mike metcalf on the gas danny kincaid jason gay lee cunningham hood and cole taking care of the rear tire carrying and sean peep is the jack man for the 15 team on the other side of the aisle the 78 team made up of gas man justin white shane papala john Brunel. Coleman, Dollar Hyde, Dwayne Moore, and Gabe Martin, the six men. You guys, we haven't said a whole lot about pit crew coaches so far, but the guy who's been coaching this 15 crew, Greg Miller, has coached three championship teams, one with Bill Elliott, as well as one with Casey Kane at the nine crew, and also with Brian Vickers and Red Bull in the 83 team. So he's got a lot of members from that 83 team over there also taking a look at Brian Patty right now, uh, watching Mike Metcalf, former running back at Appalachian State. Hey, do you believe he likes noodling? <laughs> huh? I was trying to figure out what that was. Oh, I know what it is, but I, I'm not doing it. <laughs> and he was also part of the 2008 championship exactly team. Right. This is it, the final spot in the Sweet 16. Who will it be? Again, we keep saying it. We already got with the Jack Man's down as far as the rib. Uh, the, I said Red Bulls. Bye bye, Energy Cruise. Boy, Sean I'm going to tell you what, Dave okay. Martin, the jack man for that 78 Furniture Row team, he got to that car, and they are calling ahead of the 15 team. I'm going to tell you what, what though. Sean Pete went down. Well, I'll tell you what happened, guys. The 78 team, Gabe Martin, the jack man, left early. Ah. He had a false start, and so they have got at least a five-second penalty. I saw that. Well, there you see it. That's what the FS means with the five-second penalty there. Rick, good eyes, buddy, because, again, I was watching Sean Pete crash and thinking about how great he had done before we used to see him with the Red Bull crew. Right now, it's just unbelievable. On the 78 team, the fastest gas man has been Justin White. So Justin turning out the time of 8.045 seconds. And if they hadn't had the penalty, the 78 team would have had the fastest time of the night. And that would have broke the record, by the way of the fastest pit stop ever in this competition. That mark held by the 14 team of 21.472 seconds. So a very quick time, but not able to outdo them tonight. Colin Dollar, dollar Head and Dwayne Moore. Watch here, there he goes. Sean Pete goes down hard, and he really threw off his rhythm. He got too far off on the jack handle, but look at him trying to hustle to get back up there and help his team. Let's hear from him. He's with Bob Dillner. Yeah, Sean Pete, uh, looking at what you did up there, what happened? My feet just came out from under me. I think uh, I'd be better, better off of this place side of the ice still, but uh, yeah, I <laughs> fell apart over here and uh, fell down, and 78 0 pushed us. I mean, they're big, strong guys, and. Uh, uh, we lucked out and got a penalty, but we're moving on. He talks about ice. He's a Canadian. He knows a thing or two about ice. Yeah, it's definitely slippery right there. And again, folks, that hurts when you go down that hard. But he didn't quit. They no. had the three-second penalty, but the 78 team, Furniture Row, had 13 seconds of penalties. We keep saying it all night long. Hey, guys, we've had eight runs here, and only five teams have had no penalties. Hey, and they've won every part of the competition so far. They've won every event. Top eight and owner's points are about to get busy. They make up 
the eight of the Sweet 16. There are 16 teams that advance to the next round, and there's the big board. Who will be your 2012 champions in the Pit Crew Challenge? Stay with us. We've got eight more competitions coming up for the next round. Tomorrow, All-Star Week on Speed hits high gear as the world's toughest truckers do battle under the lights at a high-speed heavyweight showdown. Don't miss the NASCAR Camping World Truck Series from Charlotte tomorrow, 7.30 Eastern, live on Speed. Promises to be a great show under the lights. Sparks always flying. Well, there's some sparks flying here. The NASCAR Sprint Pit Crew Challenge and the individual champions have been determined. Let's hear from them. They're with Bob Dillner. And Rick, they are $10,000 richer. And this guy right here, Jeff Carr, he's a three-time titleist as a Jackman. What does it mean to win this title three times over? It's very, very hard, but we put in a lot of hard work and a lot of effort. And we got to thank our, our we definitely got to thank our pit crew coach. We got to thank a guy that's doing all of our training during the day. And when you do this hard work, it pays off at the end of the day. I tell you what, a lot of times we see multiple members from teams up here. Well, we got it tonight. The 18 boys, very, very fast. Tom Lampy, Jake Seminara. I tell you what, very quick, guys. What does this mean to you to be individual champions and standing on stage here with your kids? Oh, it means a ton, you know doing this for eight years uh, every time we've come up short not this year it's great it's great and Jake for you this is a two tandem deal here you cannot do this alone uh, tell me about your performance here tonight uh, definitely uh, me and Kenny Barber uh, it's our second time up here so this is awesome uh, we had a really good time tonight just uh, really smooth and uh, we have a guy that works in our fab shop uh, Rodney Halverson and uh, he's actually sick and uh, I think we're gonna get together and uh, probably donate some money to him um, he's uh, he's having some foundation and stuff like that, so probably going to donate some money to him and, and wish him the best of luck. So getting healthy. So that is an awesome situation for these guys. Congratulations to the 18 bunch now. Lampy, Seminera, the rear tire changers, as well as the fuel guy. Records, but also a record for this guy. We spoke to him already here tonight. Tim Sheets. How about it standing up here in ten thousand dollars, Richard? And it's exciting. I'll tell you, I've been working. It's my 14th season at changing tires. You know and. Uh, be working hard. A lot of people say, you know, if you're big, you can't get it done. You know, you don't fit the eye, don't fit the eye template, the eye test. I'll tell you what, if you got the heart and you got the wheel, and you got a good tire carrier like JD here, you can get her done. All right, JD and Tim Sheets, all these guys, very, very happy. Matt down here, ten thousand dollars. They won here tonight. Hey, it's not bad. Anytime you walk out of an arena with ten grand. I'm here with Chad Canals. Chad, first of all, congrats on 200. Yeah, that was awesome. It was a great accomplishment. These guys, uh, these guys that are performing here tonight, played a pretty big part in that race win. Well, you've been building this team for a number of years, and it's been paying off great dividends this year. How have they been performing on pit road this year? Really, as a whole, we're still got, we've still got growing pains. A lot of these guys are, are young athletes that are still learning their role and learning what it is to actually go out and race and compete on a weekly basis from that standpoint. But really, they've done a fantastic job. And like I said, they're just getting better and better every time we hit pit road. And I'm, I'm pretty happy with they were They won their first round here, so they did a really good job, so I'm stoked. Rick, back to you guys upstairs. Thanks, Chad. Thanks, Matt. The next two teams to take the track, the 21 and the 48, will introduce them once again. Who will make it to the final eight? It's about to be determined. Welcome back under the lights for the Time Warner Cable Arena for the NASCAR Sprint Pit Crew Challenge. It's the eighth time this competition has been contested. Guys, all I can tell you, that round one, I mean, I am ringing wet right now. My hands are still sweaty. I can only imagine what these guys are thinking, especially the guys that are getting ready to start their second round. Think about guys like front tire carrier R.J. Burnett for the 48 team. Lived in his car for a week when he moved to Charlotte. Getting a job and being a part of that crew, I'm sure, is a lifelong dream come true. The 21 team, again, Mike Smith, Corey Baldwin, Brian Thomas, Dwayne Ogles, Garrett Redding. And Jeremy Newey. You see Mike Smith there. He has been with the Wood Brothers for 22 years. There's not a function on a pit crew <laughs> that he's not played before. Every role he has played on the over-the-wall team. And right now, the gas man for this competition. Looks pretty solid right there. I saw no spillage whatsoever. He's not the making two, any mistakes. The two jack men were dead even sprinting with the go. 21 and the now 48. Push. This the car has start at the exact same time. Who's going to get the points? Right. The 48 is pulling away. 
Four Look at the 48 go right by the 21. Yeah, about 10 or 15 yards out, that 48 poured it on. And guys, that's better than what they did in the earlier round as far as the seeding is concerned also with the 48 team. They picked it up a little bit. Saw Jack Canales and Jimmy Johnson cheering on their team. They're clean and green right now. Yeah, Jeff, that was a half a second pickup. Yeah, it was. Very impressive runs for both the 21 and the 48, but the 48, what a push they had. But did you notice when they saw they had it, they safety up a little bit. They still got some kick left, guys. I mean, they got it could go faster yet. Potentially two more rounds for the 48 team. But again, they were our number one seed. They were the fastest in our first set of seeding from the first round. And you notice the crew members, they don't push the buttons now because the individual competition over. It's all about doing your individual task, getting to that race car, pushed it for 40 yards. I think Chad Canals likes it a lot. He likes it a lot. So does Greg Moore and the pit crew coach there. He told me tonight earlier, hey, I'm ready to win this thing. I told him you got the talking part done, guy. Now you got to back it up. And so far, they've done it. They came close a year ago. They were in the final against the 11 team. And they know that. And it's still smart from a year ago that they got beat. Hey, I'm here with TJ for Jackman in the 48. TJ, your guys are down to two guys initially pushing that car. How important is it for you to get your job done clean and get to the car, do your 40-yard sprint? Well, the, uh, you know, getting down there first, it helps out a lot. The initial push means a lot. But really, as you can see, the main thing tonight, so I'm out of breath, is not making mistakes. There's a lot of mistakes out there. So clean run is the most important thing right now. How hard have you guys been training? You were runner-up last year. What it would it mean for you guys to win this coming off a of 200? Oh, we've been training a lot for it. We always train really hard, but, you know, we uh, this means a lot to us to get out here and compete. So, yeah, we, we put in the effort for sure. Guys, no doubt he is a true athlete. TJ gets it done on the floor. This is He, he shows you how to get it done. Back to you guys. Thanks, Matt. Saturday, don't miss a special all-star edition of NASCAR Race Day. Five-time champ Jimmy Johnson talks about picking up the 200th win for Hendrick Motorsports. Plus, Smoke, Happy, Cousin Carl join us live. That's NASCAR Race Day fueled by Sunoco from Charlotte Saturday for Eastern, live on speed. These positions are so important, and we see this competition, the 48 team advancing. But remember, it was just a couple years back where controversy was in the Hendrick pit crew area because the 24 team came over to pit for the 48 team in the middle of a race at Texas, and everybody thought, oh, my goodness, what's going on? What was going on was they were trying to win a championship, exactly. and a lot of people might have questioned that. But the thing was, Rick, when they made the change, what did they do? They went on and won the championship, and that was what was important. 20 team in this competition, the driver of the 20 standing by with Bob. That's right, fastest team in the first round. Joey Logano, I want to know, did you give him a pep talk going into the second round here? They don't need a pep talk. They uh, they did a good job the first round. I told them no mistakes. That's what's been winning these things, just uh, being smooth. So they don't get them fired up too much, but uh, they don't need it. They're good enough. Joey Logano and I are joking around. This is the first time I'm looking up to him, guys. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's standing on a pedestal. That helps. Take a look at the 20 team again. John Eicher, John Royer, Joe Crossan, Chris Taylor, Eric Grun, and Jason Tate. On the other side of the wall, they go up against Wes Evans, Eric Maycroft, Craig Corion, Cori Cori excuse me, Brandon Hopkins, Adam Mo Mosher, and Brian Hooty Chase. Again, this will be the first time you'll see that team because they were in the top eight in these standings. Now, the competition, 24 teams, how you become eligible, it's the 20 teams that's already locked into the Sprint All-Star Race, and then the top four in owner points that are not in it, which would include the 56 and the 20 car. We'll see if they can continue to advance through the competition. Can you handle the pressure right here? Here's a guy who knows how to handle pressure. Driver, that number 55. And, and he's been Martin close Trex this Jr. year. Yes, he has that been knocking, on, knocking on the door, and he needs it the support of these guys are each and every Sunday. Now he's down here supporting me. Jack Mann, Brian Hootie Chase goes into action for the 56 car. Brian, one of the smaller Jack men, but I talked to Brian. He's an avid bicyclist, and he said, I think my quickness outweighs the fact that I'm not a big guy. It's technique a lot. Here we talk about technique. The 20 car is already driving down the lane, and the 55 is trying to close up. They're not going to be able to do it. So it's time to go back to the scorecard one more time. Who made mistakes and who did not? Right now, it looks as though the 20 team beats them to the line at 23.192 seconds. Are they penalty free? That's the big question. They are, I believe. They are. Yeah. It looks as though all green for 
the 20 team. So the 20 team will advance into the final eight. You know, one thing real quick, guys. I know they're disappointed that they got beat. But if you have to lose, at least lose with no penalty. I mean, if you just got flat out beat, but you didn't beat yourself. It's small consolation, but it, that's something that's important to the pit crew coaches as well as the drivers because they worked so hard to eliminate mistakes. And ultimately, when it was all said and done, they lost by a half a second. So you think about that. If you are if you make no mistakes on pit road in the middle of a race and only a half a second, that's what a half a second looks like exactly. right there. Exactly and let's go down to that. I'm here with Jimmy Johnson. He's talking to an official, <laughs> Daryl. But Jimmy, you're coming off a huge win, number 200 for you. How important was it for you to get that win? I wish it was my 200th win. That would be awfully cool. But for Rick and, and Hendrick Motorsports, 200 wins, uh, it's amazing. And, and something very special. I, I didn't spend a lot of time thinking about it going into it. Of course, I want to be the guy to win it for Rick. But um, now that it's happened, and I think about the drivers, the people, um, the 30 years that Rick has put into the sport, and to be able to deliver such a monumental win to him. And then the other 55, too, is is really really cool and something i'm very proud of i know you work out with these guys how hard do they train and they've been integral to what to your success here yeah these guys are they're solid gold they're they're uh they have huge hearts genuinely and, and from the bottom of their hearts care about this race team and dedicate their lives to it and I, I can't thank them enough so happy to see their performance tonight and i hope they go all the way to the top thanks jimmy guys he got 200 but he's not going to stop there five times Jimmy Johnson all smiles as his team will advance to the final eight. Who will join them in that final eight? Coming up next, the 16 and 24. You don't want to miss it. And welcome back to Time Warner Arena from downtown or uptown Charlotte, North Carolina. We have a couple teams that have already advanced, the 48 and the 20, continuing on for their quest to find out who will be crowned the champion of the pit crew challenge. We take a look at the lineups for the next matchup. The 24 team, Travis Gordon, Corey DeMarco, Dion Williams, Chad Averett, Gene Cornwell, and Bailey Walker. And the 16 team, driven by Greg Biffle, watching on right now. Their team, the gas man, is Justin Reisman, excuse me, Reisman, Kevin Novak, Brian Hewitt, Curtis Thompson, Justin Ed Edgel, and Sean Meckelson. And with the exception of the gas man, Justin Reisman, this entire pit crew was David Reagan's sixth pit crew from last year. Yeah, you talk about Reisman. Can you believe he was studying, uh, studying to be a civil engineer at UNCC, but he got his break working as a park ranger, Rick? I mean, can you believe it? A park ranger. Let's find out who advances. The horn goes. We're back underway. The 16 team, one of the top eight in the owner points, so they had a bye in the first round. <laughs> Guys get to the 16 and the 24 about the exact same time. Looks like the 24 has a little hang up there. Yeah, it's close. Yeah, it's going to be close. It if is you get real the close. Going. All about the drive. Side by the side. Drive. I believe that 24 got the drive there at the end. It's going to be so close, though. Uh, Looks like one tenth push. of a second. Yep. The 24 team butts. It looks as though I see a penalty five on the 24. On the 24 team of five seconds. Is it clean on the other side? That's the question. Coming up green on the 16 side. And it looks as though the penalty will be the difference. The 16 team got beat to the line, but the 24 team had a penalty, and so the 16 is going to advance. Travis Gordon, the fuel man for the 24 team. See if we can see what went on here. <laughs> Rear changer, Curtis Thompson for the 16 team. You know, that guy likes to break dance, Curtis Thompson. And no. grow watermelon. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. How about the rear tire carrier, Justin Edgel? He's a champion juggler. And I'm he, telling you, these guys have got some very colorful packs. And he also wants won a pie eating contest. <laughs> but Jeff and I talked about it at the top of the show. Mistakes. We see it right. every single year here. I believe Greg Biffle, the driver of that 16. And Bob, I think Greg Biffle liked what he saw there. I'm sure he did. They advanced to the next round, Greg Biffle. So I know you're proud, but I want to know different perspective of your guys in doing these pit stops than you normally have. What is that like? Uh, it's 
It's real scary. I mean, I'm I'm more nervous for him standing up there than I am behind the wheel. But uh, they did a great job. You know, no penalties is a key. Be fast to be you know down the down the push lane. So. They did a great job, and I'm excited they made it. Greg Biffle, they're the point leaders with that 16 bunch, but bad luck continues for Jeff Gordon in the 24, Matt. I'm here with Jeff Gordon. I know you've had a rough start, but how nice is it to be here, kind of relaxing, watching your guys do work? Oh, this is great. I mean, it's still nerve-wracking even being on this side of it, though, watching these guys, you know. They're so good. These guys are so solid on pit road. I hate we had that penalty right there, but these guys have been rock solid all year long. With, with all the things that have been going wrong for our 24 team this year, the one constant that's been great is the pit crew. So, love coming out and supporting them. What a great crowd here tonight for this big uh, sprint pit crew challenge. Challenge. And uh, one thing's for sure, nobody's beat my guys down this pit road, man. When they get to the car, that thing is fast down pit road. Hey, we got knocked out. 48 looks good. So it's going to be a, a, a fun night to watch. So as a driver, your team might be knocked out, but as a car owner, you still have a shot. Yeah, sort of, I guess. Uh, if Rick Hendricks not here, then yes, I'll take that uh, that role. But no, you know what? Uh, it's just any Hendrick team that's here. We're pulling for them, and I uh, want to see them do good. But I just thought those guys looked like the team to beat, and uh, that was a pretty fast time they put up that last run. Guys, you heard it from Jeff. A good night to turn around their luck. He's looking for a good run this weekend, so he'll be able to get this thing behind him and the bad luck. So have a good run, Jeff. Thanks. Look at the big board. Almost filled up the left bracket as far as the four that will advance. The next up, the 17 and 55. Now in the first round, 55, penalty free. That's that, what you got to have. But going back to what Jeff Gordon was talking about, what a great way to cap off that 200 win from Darlington oh, yeah. to bring the first Sprint Pit Crew Challenge Championship to Hendrick Motorsports. You know, it's really surprising, as good as they've been on pit road, you would think an uh, organization, especially won five championships in a row, would have been able to probably pull this deal off. But I think it shows how much it may be the same type of jobs, but there's still some little uh, curves that are kind of thrown in for some of these guys rid them off. The 17 team made up of Sean Ward, Justin Nottestad, Colin Pazzi, John Moore, Ryan McRae, and Cameron Cobb. We take a look at the 55 team. Brian Deal, Ryan Langley, Chris Hall, Shannon Myers, Mark Kinnerly, and Tony Cardamo. Now, actually, Chris Hall, his wife, Danelle, is behind the wheel of that 55 car. She is piloting it while Mark Martin watches on from up on the stands. Who will advance and fill up the left side of the bracket for the 2012 Sprint Pit Crew Challenge? We are about to find out. See Matt, Matt Kenseth, Kenseth and his crew chief, Jimmy Finning. Yep. Jimmy Finning's son, Joe, is driving that 17 car. Here you see the nail. <laughs> 55 team in the first round had the third fastest time overall. And it looks as though pretty even for the Jackman getting to the car. Yeah, Tony A little bit of spillage potentially on that 55. So they go penalty free in the first round and might have a penalty now. But the 17 team surging as they get past the halfway point and will win the race just over 23 seconds. And it looks as though a spillage in the 55 team for the gas man is going to be a five second penalty. There you see the penalty sign right there, but I tell you, that 17 crew, they got that 17 car moving, and it just kept getting faster. The 17 team advances, so that Kenseth all smiles as his team will continue on in this competition. Let's watch Brian Deal. See, there it is, right there when he tried to hook up that second can. That is what NASCAR called the penalty for. Take a look at this push. Halfway down, they surge in front of the 55. Well, we know these guys are pretty solid. Every time Matt Kenseth comes to pit road during the race, looks like they're pretty solid tonight. Bob Dillner. Over here with Ryan McRae, who's a tire carrier. Now, the tire carriers don't get a lot of credit, but uh, how about that run? You boys are pretty quick. Tell you what, we ain't ever made it out of the second round, so we're doing something so far. Uh, just want to thank Fifth Third for coming aboard. And uh, hopefully we can make it out third round. He's a little out of breath right now, but Ryan McRae, 13 years in the business. Again, you got to remember, doing things they don't normally do, running 40 yards, pushing a 3,200-pound car, another 40 yards. we got more of it right here on Speed.
Saturday, get a special preview of the new Speed Series Hard Parts South Bronx. See Joe and his tough as nails team hunt down impossible to find auto parts in a cutthroat business where street rules are the only rules. Catch a special preview of Hard Parts South Bronx Saturday, immediately following the All Star Race, only on Speed. There they are, the defending champions, two time defending champions, the 11 team. Now, guys, we're taking a look here on the 11 car. You see that black stuff right up here? Uh, it's really amazing. This is what helps these guys get these cars rolling, Matt. And if you didn't have that, there's different pushing locations, they would just be sliding right off the car. Guys, it's, it's unbelievable what teams do to get their stuff ready for this competition. They spend hours and hours and tens of thousands of dollars developing their pit guns for this particular event. It makes a huge difference dialing your gun in to adapt to 100 pounds of pressure at the regulator and torque the wheels. Well, we just, we just see this competition growing and growing, and they, they have a year to think about it. I think that's one reason we saw so many new records right. set tonight in the individual competition. Yeah, they continue to get better each and every year. Again, the defending and two-time defending champions. You see Denny Hamlin all smiles before the start of this one. He's Darren trying to Grubb. pay off the NASCAR official, but it won't work. <laughs> We're underway. Now, that was a little interesting that Dennis Killing did on the 99. He jacked the car to angle to put him closer to making the transition around the car. Here it is. This is where the push is going. The 11 the team 11 got it started quicker than the 99, and it looks as though the 11 is going to cruise through this one. Are there any penalties? That will be the question now. So the 11 team beats the 99 to the line. 22.769 seconds, a very impressive run. And that has been their M.O. when it comes to this competition. They've been able to basically stay penalty free and make that push go. They are penalty free. The 99, although, has a penalty. By the way, that's the fastest time any team has turned out. We saw cruising at the end. This is what they have done the last two years. They've almost got quicker as the night has went on. Take a look. This is the 99 team. Looking back at... Jack man and the gas man get into the car. Not quite as quick getting that car started as the 11 team. Big Joe's trying to trying to get it going here, but I'm telling you, 50 year old Scott Wood, gas man on that 11 car, he's been kind of like the anchor man of this team for so many years, whether he was a Jack man or whether he was a gas man. Getting it done. He was a part of both the 2010 and 2011 team. You see Carl Edwards signing some autographs, hanging out with some of the fans here. Let's go to Bob. Everybody knew the 11 boys would be tough to beat, and Denny Hamlin, uh, as the guy that drives that car, those boys are making it look easy so far. Yeah, they, they do an amazing job, and, uh, you know, they seem like the first year they were, you know, a little bit nervous and, and things like that, but it seems like now they've got the, the wins under the belt, and they're just playing a little bit loose right now, and they're, uh, they're having a lot of fun, and obviously uh, this is all about stamina. If you can make it through the first couple rounds, Try not to use up your energy. Uh, you'll have more for the end. And that's the big key here, having more for the end. These guys know how to get it done better than anybody lately in the Pit Crew Challenge. And, Bob, remember, Darian Grubb, the 2011 champion crew chief, moves over to the 11 team. So now he's overseeing this pit crew. Well, he is, and he isn't. Just remember, these teams, they have those pit crew coaches. And I just think Paul Aleppa and Mike Lepp, that's the right. group that's looked after that 11 bunch as they've won these last two championships. And looking to three feet tonight. Well, we talked about uh, Scott Wood. I've known and worked with Scott uh, back when I was with Roush Fenway, and he trains. He used to be a former semi-pro semi football player, and he knows how to train really hard, and he's not lost a step, and he, I think he's a great inspirator when it comes to that number 11. Bob Dillner. Dillner. And we're down here where the cars actually will start to get pushed. And what's very interesting is the different philosophies between the RCR cars going up against each other. You can see this grip tape right here where they come over, put their hand on this, and it helps them get this car pushed just a little bit more. You can see on the B post as well, just a little bit ahead in here on the roll bar. This is where these guys grab and they get a good push as down here. But if we come over to this 29 car, 
and look at the back of Kevin Harvick's car here. Unlike the 31 car, there is no grip tape other than this one on the roll bar right up here. So a little bit of different strategy for the 29 team and the 31 team here at the pit crew competition, crew chiefs. That's one thing that NASCAR allows the teams to do. You see no quarter windows in there. That's right. the reason they can put that grip tape in there. And you see Dana Wilson's name above the 29 yeah. door there. That's Shane Wilson's wife, the crew chief of the 29. But I love the fact that they're even making grip tape now with sponsors on it. I think this is the first time we've seen this. Never miss an opportunity, Larry. Yeah, there's a few inches left on the car. Let's go ahead and make sure we get some sponsor ads there. Again, the 29 team in the first round when they were doing the seating round, they actually had penalties for the front tire carrier and the rear or the front tire changer and rear tire changer three seconds apiece. But they were able to advance in their seating. So because of the being in the top eight in owner points, so now they're going to try to go penalty free to see if they can advance against their teammate, the 31 team. It's going to be a little bit dicey up here in RCR tomorrow whenever yes. they go back to the shop with this group. No matter who wins, it's going to be like, uh-huh, we got you, didn't we? Who do you think the most nervous guy in the arena is right at this moment? I would say it's the guy right there, Eric Wilson. <laughs> you think it's Eric? Who's the standing, coach? Standing Shane. right here. And Shane right here, Shane Wilson, crew chief for the 29 oh, team. He's watching this on TV. He's passing <laughs> he time. I'm taking pictures. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll give him permission to use that footage, though. Or at least we might. We'll yeah. talk to our producer. Terry will give him permission, I'm sure. Jeff Burton watching on. Will his team advance, or will it be Kevin Harvick's number 29 team that moves in to the final eight positions? Jeff Burton's team won this championship back in 2009. Look at the focus. Look at the focus right there. Ryan Smith, gas man for the 29 team. He's ready to go to work. Oh, that's not good right there. Not a good start. Not the way you want to start. Again, we talked about second they, camp. they had penalties in the first round, the seeding round. Jason Hunt, Andrew Childers, the two going. Jack men. 31 is going. They got to the car about the same time, but you're right, Jeff, about a half a car late right now for the 31 team. Big push for the 31, and at the clock, they will look the quickest 23.317 but we're yeah. seeing fuel spills potentially on both teams yeah. so that might negate those penalties have to go to see a little deeper it looks like the uh, 31 is clean as far as except for the fuel same for the 29 so it basically it's going to wind up being the 31 beat the 29. out right there at the very start you see the fuel being spilled let's take a look here on the 31 car Let's see he, what he does. That's John Wallace. Andrew. And when he hooks up, that's where he made the spill. It just covers. He, he knew he was in trouble oh, right yeah. there. But he had no idea his teammate on the other side, Brian Smith, having the same issue. But we've been talking all night long. He didn't quit. He kept digging. You cannot quit. The 31 team advances because they beat him to the strike. Matt. I'm here with Andrew Childers. A little friendly competition between your former roommate at Sanford University, R.J. Burnett. What do you like your chances against the 48 if you make it? Well, I mean, I know they got a bunch of stud athletes, but we're a bunch of hard workers, so we'll see what we'll see what I prove out there. Love you, R.J. <laughs> you heard from him, guys. It's all <laughs> talk between those cats. Bragging rights within the teams. RCR having two teams going head to head in the pit crew challenge. And this time, it's the 31 that advances. So the left side of the board is complete. We'll finish the right side next. Two spots remain. Who will advance to the final eight? The left side, it's filled up. The 48, the 20, the 16, and the 17 move on. The 11 and 31, they're going to compete against each other in the quarterfinal. Who will be the other quarterfinal? Will it be the 14 or the 9? We're about to find out. So again, the nine team made up of Robert Smith, Aaron Powell, Lance Hanna filling in for Joel Colonel, Justin Fiedler, and Eric Wallace and Rodney Fetters making up the nine team on the other side of the wall. The 14 team and the driver of that 14 team and owner. Yeah, driver owner. 
Tony Stewart hanging out down here with Matt. He's definitely hanging out. He always seems to be kind of loose at these events. Tony, your guys have placed really well over the years. How big would it be to you to bring one of these home? Well, it, it's big for these guys. And, I mean, you're having a big night, too. I mean, you're, you're rivaling Matt Yoakum on best hair of the year so far. So, uh, but these guys do an awesome job. I mean, they work hard. And, um, you know, this is their night. I mean, just like the, the all-star race this weekend is our big night. This is, a, this is a night that's dedicated to the guys and how hard they work. So I'm really proud of them. Thanks, Tony. And now to a guy with great hair, Rick I was going to say, Allen. Matt, seriously, tell Tony that I want to be in the running for the best hair. I mean, I want to have better than Matt Yoakum hair, right? How about Rick Pigeon hair? Pigeon, right? Yeah, that, that look, he's got the streamlined look. <laughs> All right with Joe Hussey, Todd Drac Draculich, Daniel Smith, Michael Morneau, and Mike Casto. Now, Mike Casto, the champion a year ago, Jackman, individually. How about that? Rick Pigeon. Gas it, Daddy. Well, that's Rick Pigeon's wife, Jill. She was not able to be here a year that's ago right. because she was about to have a baby. Who will advance? Who will be there to take on the other quarterfinal competitor? There's a little bit behind. Just a little bit behind right there. Saw Mike Casto, the jack man for the 14 car, sitting down there. He was a wide receiver. Played college football. The 14 gets it rolling, but here comes the nine. They were saying the nine was good in the push, but right now that 14 is driving. 14 has the advantage as they cross the stripe. 14 by 37 hundredths of a second. And we're hearing at least one penalty on the nine. It looks like a gas spill. They're green over there on the 14 side, guys. Mistake free. So the 14 not only defending Sprint Cup champions. Tony's all smiles. But now trying to make their way into the Pit Crew Challenge Championship ranks. Take another look at the spill. Oh, there it is. That's Robert Smith. He's only been a fuel man since the beginning of 2012. Talked to him earlier today. <laughs> Daniel Smith, the rear changer for the Stuart Haas 14 team. Great so, shot. So impressive of these, the tire changers. Takes about a second for them to take five lug nuts off each wheel. Yeah, Very five impressive. off and five on. That's, that's the way you do it. Bob Dilner. Ira Joe Hussey, tire changer on the 14 team. Uh, I want to know, you've been doing this for a long time. Every competition you've been part of, uh, what's the key to success? Uh, not making mistakes, man. Everything going smooth. All your teammates not making mistakes. Good push. Hitting all five lug nuts on, all five off. No spillage on the fuel and down the road, hopefully to the final. Sounds simple, is it? No, not at all. <laughs> Ira Joe Hussey, they advance to the next round with the 14 bunch, and guys, he's a veteran of the NASCAR Awards. Thanks, Bob. Larry, did you notice he's out of breath? Well, and like, we, we wanted to point out that the rounds are going to get quicker right. and quicker because we're going to have less teams participate. We're going to find out who the athletes really are and where the conditioning are all about. There's Dale Earnhardt Jr. Great to see him down here. Now, just remember, that 14 team set an event record last year in the quarterfinals, 21-472. I'm not sure we'll see that beat. They have one less crew member pushing the That's cars, right. which is a, probably another reason it takes more energy to get that car down there. Again, only six over the wall, guys pushing the car different from a year ago where they had seven in the years previous against seven years previous th of this competition this is the eighth annual competition for the pit crews as they push the cars into place let's go back to Matt Clark hey guys I'm looking ahead to the next round I know we got some races going on here but you see the 11 and the 31 this is a matchup from 2009 and championship matchup for 2010. 2009, the 31 car won it. 2010, it started the 11 car reign. The 11 car now is up 16 and three in head-to-head -head events. I think Bob is hanging out with the man, the most popular driver, Dale Earnhardt Jr. Bob? That's right, Jr. here rooting on his boys, and his boys are doing as good as he's doing on the racetrack this year. How about the performance of the 88 team here tonight, Jr.? Uh, they, if they can do it tonight like they've been doing on the racetrack it, it'll be awesome because they've been awesome all year long on pit road uh, my man Steve Latart's home I think he jammed his finger or something uh, got a hangnail but I'm here representing and uh, hope we move through the rounds we were in the semifinals last year and they want to win it all tonight do you get nervous up here any jitters any butterflies watching your boys I want my boys to win you know I want them to win as bad as they do so yeah I was a little bit nervous but 
uh, I'm sure, uh, you know, they, they got a lot of talent. They'll get it done. All right, Dale Earnhardt Jr. rooting on his boys, and they were good last year, hoping to do it again this year. I'm just not sure Steve Tart's going to be proud that Dale Earnhardt Jr. Yeah, promoted if he's not here because of a hangman. Throw him under the bus. <laughs> right. Sir. Throw him under the bus. We talk about how tough these guys are. Well, the thing is, remember, Rick, we'll take a look here at the list as far as gas man, Caleb Herb, and everything. There's, there's Dale Jr. again. But remember, they didn't make any mistakes in the seating round, so they were penalty free while the 15, they did make some mistakes, but they got by by the hair of their chinny chin chin. Metcalf, Kincaid, Gay, Cunningham, Putin, Coleman, and Sean Pete making up that 15 team. Sean busted his tail the last time in, his, right. in the pre previous round, so I'm sure he's going to be a little bit tentative coming around that car like he did the last time. Jeff Gordon talked about the 48 team advancing for Hendrick Motorsports. Can the 88 as well? It's about to be determined. 15 versus the 88. Competitors at the ready. The gas man, Caleb Hurd, against Mike Metcalf. Watch closely. It's when you initially go to stick the probe in is when they seem to have fuel spillage. So far, both nice these guys ahead. not even way a ahead. drop of fuel. Now he's off to the races here. He is fast. 15 has now got it rolling already. First, but here comes the 88. Did not make a mistake that last time. Here comes 88. Boy, They're here. coming they back. Coming. They're coming back. Can they get there? It looks no. like the 15 is going to beat him to the line by 15 one hundredths of a second. It got closer and closer as they got down to the end there. Now the penalties. Are there any for either team? Is it clean on both sides? We're hearing the 15 potentially a penalty. Wow. The 15 is penalized, meaning the 88 will advance. So the 88 team moves on to the final eight. Unreal. At one little mistake. And that's that's two rounds now that the 88 has gone penalty free and they continue on. Seven of the eight winners in round two were penalty free, Rick. I mean, this is where the cream is rising to the top. We'll take a look there. This is where the penalty occurred. Didn't get it tight enough. Yeah, Lee Cunningham, his carrier, carrier Puddin' Coleman. And they're only checking the torque of these lugs at 20 foot pounds, which is not much more than finger top. Right. Mike Metcalf right now, again, a former running back right there, Appalachian State. There's Sean Pete, former hockey player, played professional hockey. I mean, look at the drive that Mike Metcalf has given that 15. That was the difference as far as getting to the start-finish line first, but, again, they made a mistake. Pretty impressive run. Again, for the 88 team, 22.668 across the stripe. And Saturday night, the stars come out. Gloves will come off. The NASCAR Sprint All-Star Race, you'll only see it right here on speed. See NASCAR's best square off in an all-or-nothing million-dollar brawl. The NASCAR Sprint All-Star Race, Saturday, 7 Eastern, only on speed. And the driver of the 48 team, I bet he's uh, going to post that picture on Twitter. I follow him on Twitter. He I might, do, too. Post might post our camera. Yeah, our camera shot there. Welcome back to the NASCAR Sprint pit crew challenge we're down to the final eight we're about to determine the first semi-finalists it will be between the 20 and the 48 team take a look at the pit crew for the 48 guys yeah, hendrick motorsports still a couple of bullets in the running here with 88 to 48 joe gibbs racing still with the 20 and the 11 in the final eight. And Roush has got two teams as well as Childers has one and Stuart Haas with the 14 of Tony Stewart are still involved in this competition in the uh, semifinals. Or headed to the semifinals. It just looks like right now with eight teams left to go, no mistakes, especially in the fuel spillage yep. and in who can get that car rolling first. And again, the winner of this competition gets the first selection for pit stalls for the all-star race. We're back under one. Calvin Teague, Matt Perrell on the rear for the 48 team. Watching TJ Ford right now, the Jack man. He's headed down the pit lane already to get that 48 car rolling. Little different philosophy. The first two to the 20 car went to the front. The second guy to the 48. All the 48 guys are to the rear, and there they go. Pulling away, 
And they're trying to conserve their energy. 22.903 for the 48 team. If they're penalty free, they move on. And once again, we see Chad Canals going to congratulate these guys. But just before the, the end of the finish line, you've seen a lot of the guys look over. They knew where the 20 car was, and they waved everybody off. Looks like to me the 48 team penalty free. I see all green zeros. And they were first to the stripes, so the 48 team is going to advance. So there is our first semifinalist. 48 team, Chad Canales, the crew chief, Jimmy Johnson, the five-time champion. Yeah, the gas man for the 20, Jason Tate, he had one hand pushing the car, one trying to get that right front tire rolling. And there's different te techniques that these guys use just in this pit crew challenge to try to do these things. Again, we see this tire change going on here. That's what they're normally used to doing. The push is something that's totally different, and everybody has their own philosophy how to get the cars going and driving through. Bob Dillner. Brandon Harder is the fuel man on this team. And let me tell you something, you boys in the 48 team looking very tough to beat. What's the key so far here tonight? Oh, we've just been smooth. Uh, working as a team, no mistakes. Uh, we're just going to keep pushing. Out of breath yet? Yeah, we're getting there. We'll be all right. They still got a long way to go, but they're trying to get the first championship for Hendrick Motorsports, guys. Now, Brandon Harder, he's the fuel man, but he's a converted jack man. At one time, he worked on a crew as the jack man. Jack man can do anything, Larry. Don't forget it. Jack man, by the way, TJ Ford for that team, he owns his own furniture business. He's used to heavy lifting. Yeah, I mean, the it. guy knows how to lift things. Next up, the next two competitors, the 16 and the 17. So again, we've filled our first spot of the semifinals. The 48 team advances. Will it be the 16 or the 17 that will fill the other spot on the left side of the big board? Call it. I'm telling you right now, if you think about it, every Sunday, who do we always give a big shout out to? That's the 17, 17 group 17 right there. Team. They're usually really, really solid. But all year long, that 16 team now, Larry, they've done a great job of keeping Greg Biffle in the hunt and giving him an opportunity to lead these points. There's Greg Biffle watching on. Again, in his car is Wesley. Wesley Kate is in that 16 car driving for this competition. There's his teammates, Matt Kenseth, Jimmy Finnick next to him. And actually, it's Jimmy Finnick's son, Joe, that's driving the 17 car. That same. Don't let me down, son. Don't let me down. <laughs> Well, let's have a little show and tell. We go back to Matt Clark. Guys, we know how important the 40-yard dash is. We see the Jackman sprinting all the way up here. There's two guys on the car, the fuelers in this box right here. The big deal of this to get this car going is the skill boxes here. As quickly as they can get their stuff done and as cleanly, and they hustle to the car this way, that's when you're seeing the surge when you get that pusher number three and pusher number four on the car. That's exactly what is happening here it depends on the strategy but guys they have to keep it clean to stay in it you cannot out push a penalty you said it all night long you can't do it no matter how good you are well we know the jack man's the first guy to the car he's going to go to the left front window where the steering wheel but the different philosophies the gas man being the second guy right. some go all the way to the rear some go to the right front i think what's going to be interesting to see if both the 16 and 17 use exactly the same technique as far as their position in the people or if the 17 and you know or the 16 want to come up with something just a little bit you know different to try to get an advantage over their teammates they both have andy ward as their pit crew coach andy a 39 year old out of kannapolis north carolina so he can't lose one of his teams is going to advance one of his teams will advance into the semifinals, but which one will it be? We're about to find out. The 16 or the 17. There's the horn. They are at the ready. Sean Ward, the gas man for the 17 team. Sean Meckelson, gas man for the 16 team going to work. Right now, Cameron Cobb has got to the car quicker as far as the uh, Jackman are concerned. The 17's rolling. Pretty similar philosophies, though. The first two guys, they go to the right front and the left front. 17 here. This is where they're pouring it on. 17 is going to beat them to the stripe. So the 17 team, if they are penalty free, will advance to the semifinals. And it looks as though we've got a penalty down here in the gas the 17 area. Five second penalty, but I see two penalties over there on the 16th side. It looks like three apiece. So if that's the case, 
That we'll could be the difference right there. We'll six. have to wait and see what the penalties do. Yep. I'm looking possibly six seconds compared to the five. Yeah, the 29 to line was a tenth and a half. 29.580 after the penalties for the 16. The 17 will advance at 28.445. So this time, even though a five-second penalty by the gas man, it was six-second penalties for the 16 team, and the 17 team advances. John Ward, I think this is where we're going to see it on the yep, second hand. You can see him shaking his head, but you can't quit. we got to keep going. And he does, and that will advance the 17 team. A great push by both teams. Take a look at Front tire changer. Kevin Novak and Brian Hewitt. A three second penalty. Trying to see where that penalty is, it's where it should be, right in here when it goes back on. It's like he might have quit on that last one just a little bit, and that could have been where the three second penalty was, was incurred. 17 got the car moving just a bit quicker than the 16, beat him to the stripe. And so the driver of the 17 gets to smile and enjoy his team advancing into the semifinals, Bob. Yes, Matt Kenseth, very happy down here, but he's got the easy job tonight. He's just watching, or is it that easy? Is it nerve wracking as well? That's pretty easy. All I do is yell. So yeah, I feel good, good, uh, good for the guys here. They've been doing really good. Last couple years, they haven't got past the first or second round. So getting down to the semifinals here is, uh, is exciting. The 48 guys are gonna be tough. So I'm looking forward to, to to, uh, watch the next round. Matt Kenseth's boys have always been tough to beat. They call them the Bumblebees because they've always been fast on pit road. Matt Kenseth, his 17 team, go to the semifinals. We got more coming up on speed. On Sunday, May 27, NASCAR on Fox will be in Charlotte as defending champion Kevin Harvick and points leader Greg Biffle lead the world's best drivers in a chase for the checkered flag. Fox Sports proud to bring you exclusive coverage of Sprint Cup Series Racing with the Coca-Cola 600 live from Charlotte Motor Speedway Sunday, May 27th, prime time, 5.30 p.m. Eastern, 2.30 p.m. Pacific. You see the NASCAR building, that's the NASCAR Hall of Fame in Uptown Charlotte. We're about to, I guess, induct, well, we're going to vote to find out who we induct into the next class of the Hall of Fame. Take a look at our drivers. There's Kim Burton. She's twiddling her thumbs getting ready for this competition. Nervous energy. <laughs> She's been behind the wheel of this 31 car. I think all of these pit crew competitions. There you see Scott Wood. I think this will be the toughest battle of these quarterfinals because remember these three teams they represent these two teams represent the last three sprint pit crew challenge championships. That's right. Denny Hamlin has had the luxury of seeing his team win this competition the past two years. But can they be upset? Will there be a three peat or Will the 31 team advance into the semifinals? We're about to find out. The 11 team has been penalty free, and they have cruised in the push part of this competition. Let's find out if they do it again. Scott Wood right there, he was spot on right there. He hooked up that first can with no problem. Second can in, very clean. Didn't see a drop of fuel. Jackman both getting to the car at the same time. They start rolling the same, but the 11 with amazing push surges ahead of the 31. Again, this is where they've been so good. Now look at them catch another gear. They oh, never Very quit. close run though. 15 one hundredths of a second separating the top two. It was the 11 that makes it to the strike first. 22.728 seconds. Is it penalty free? Yes, it the 11 was clean, at least on the gas side. We saw that when Scott Wood completed it. The 31 clean as well, but it was the push that advances the 11 into the semifinals. We felt like that would be the toughest battle of the quarter finals right there. Both teams, both crews mistake free. Getting after it. 22.728 seconds for the 11 team. John Wallace, no fuel spilled whatsoever. And again, we talk about that number, 22.728. That's fast. We've seen 22.6, but nowhere near what the record is. But remember, there's only six guys as opposed to seven pushing these cars. And the difference cars. right there could have been, I noticed one of the team members on the 31 didn't get in position as quick as he needed to. So the 11 car had a full complement of six, while the 31 only had five, when I think it mattered the most, and he didn't get there quick enough to give him that extra boost. 11 celebrates again. Let's go to Bob. Rick, everybody is trying to figure out the secret of the 11 bunch. Maybe this guy right here, Jackman Nate Bowling. You're the only left-handed Jackman I know. Is that the secret to, to your success? I'll roll with that. 
Uh, I can't show, I don't know if that's the reason why, but I'll roll with that. That's what you want to go with, yeah. How good was that run there? Uh, it was an it was okay run. Uh, we definitely went 100% for once, and that was everything we had. 22-7, um, pretty it's respectable. It's not going to win it. We're going to get better. These guys are trying to conserve energy, Matt. Jeff, 2009 matchup between the 31 and 11. They came up short tonight, but how important is it for you to be here and support your guys? Well, listen, those, those guys have been the strength of our team this year. They, we haven't run as well on the racetrack as we need to, but they've done a great job on pit road, in many cases, getting the spots, and and uh, we've you know we've been letting them down in our performance. So uh, they got beat by the best tonight. They laid a good time up. They did a good job, laid a good time down, and uh, just got beat by a little bit. But give me give me my crowd on Sunday. I'm happy with them. Well, they put up a valiant effort there. That group really works hard, and, and Richard has really been supportive of the pit crew program there at RCR. Well, it's so important, as you know. I mean, it's so important, and it's uh, you know, it's it's difficult. It's you know, it's professional sports, and and you know, it's everybody's jobs on the line every single week. It's a lot of pressure on those guys. It's it's a tough deal, tough tough, tough deal to be in, and it's kind of like field goal kickers. You know, everybody forgets them as long as they're making the field goals, and it's one. Everybody all of a sudden never forgets that. So they're on the spot every single week. It's uh, it's a, it's a it's a higher pressure job than what I got in my opinion. It's really hard. Thanks, Chef. Guys, that might have been the race of the night. We'll keep an eye on that. Well, Jeff hit it exactly the nail on the head there. You don't notice something unless something goes wrong. And that's really what we've almost focused on in this competition. Everybody has done a great job, but if there's penalties, you focus on that, they don't advance. But I think Nate Nate Bolin hit the nail on the head. They had to give 100% against that 31 team, and they knew it. Great competition there. The 31 gave the 11 all they could handle. And, oh, by the way, the fastest team tonight in this competition is the 88 team. Could they back up what they did earlier tonight? 22.668 seconds in one of the earlier rounds going up against that 14 team. And Rick Pigeon on the jack for the Office Depot number 14, piloted by Tony Stewart. Tonight, piloted by Mariah Graham. You remember the gas man, Rick Pigeon? Yep. He was also the individual winner from a year ago in that position. But I think it's, this right here is, I think, what's so interesting. When you talk about the 88 group coming out of Hendrick Motorsports, I think everybody at, at Hendrick Motorsports felt like they let one slip away a year ago. Talk about the 48 mo you know, most notably. Yep. But I think this entire group, they've really ramped up their pit crew uh, training program over at Hendrick to try to get better on pit road. And so far, it's starting to prove out. Well, already we have three of the four spots filled. The 48, the 17, the 11. They have advanced. Will it be another Hendrick Motorsports team? We're about to find out. Set. Michael Casto, wide receiver in college. Jacks the right side over to the left side, up, down. Now he heads to that 14 car. And it's a sprint to the car. The 14 and the 88 guys get it there at the same time. The cars start rolling the same time. The 14 has the advantage How early. Let's get there. How they do the drive. Here Look at the 88. 88 pushing on the outside. Coming. Does the 88 get there? Yes. They do. 44 one thousandths of a second. Let's find out if there are any penalties. It all happened in the last 15 to 88 is clean. 88 is clean. They have been all night long, too. 88 clean, 88 advances. And so is the 14. How disappointing can that be to be that good, that fast, yet get beat? Both teams under 23 seconds, but the faster Dale Earnhardt Jr.'s 88 team will move on to the semifinals. So they're in the the final four. I'm not sure they didn't get the lead until about the last five yards. It was a huge push by the 88 team. You see the guys exhausted. They've got potentially two more battles they'll have to go through to find out who the champ will be. Welcome back. NASCAR Sprint Pit Crew Challenge. Coming down to the final four. Who will advance? Let's go to the big board. Bob Dilner and Matt Clark. And we've been analyzing everything from pit road down here at the Time Warner Arena. What do we have to be concerned for for the crews in this semifinal? Well, we talked about it early. It's being penalty free. We're seeing teams advance because penalties and other teams are not having them. Also, this two guy push is a big deal, Bob. What do you got going to the I, final? I got an all Hendrick final 48 88. Who you got, Big Tell boy? you what, I'm going to go 17 and the maybe three time champions for the 11 bunch. It looked, like it looked like Saturday Night Fever oh, up there with Bob. Did. 
doing it. I'm, I'm kind of like Matt. I'm liking the 48-88 getting to the finals right now. They are looking very impressive. Like they really want this thing as far as Hendricks concerned. That 88 is going to have to beat that 11, though. Exactly. And those have been the two fastest teams already in competition. But they will battle it off in the semifinal. It's the second semifinal. The first one is the 17 and the 48 team. Who will make it into the finals? Hadn't been long since these guys were just out here. You don't have much time now between rounds. And again, we saw the 48 team let up. We knew that when they had the advantage, they were able to let off. So maybe that extra energy that they saved from the push will help them this time around. Jackman both sprinting to the cars. TJ Ford is off to the races right here. He's gonna get to the car first. Actually, the 48's got two people there before the 17. They're moving. They're turning it off. Big push and they let up early again. A dominant performance, 22.453. That's the fastest time of the night. It reminded me of, right, of the fullback for the New York Giants that almost didn't want to score the touchdown. They started flagging them off. He was letting up at the end, and they are clean. How fast can they be, guys, if they're pulling up that early? That is the big question. Both teams penalty free. The 48 will advance because of that blazing fast time of 22. Point four five three seconds, the fastest time of the night. Now, all I can say right now as we watch these guys go through the motions here, it's just in incredible how good they're getting here late in, the, in this competition. Jeff, do you suppose, though, that they're letting up, just trying to save themselves a little bit? We don't want to use all our, our energy if we know we've won the round. We've, we've seen how many times in interviews guys have been winded. This is where your condition comes into play, but also being smart. The other thing you got to think about, experience. They were in the championship round a year ago against 11. They saw what the 11 did to win the championship. Championship, they might be taking a page out of the playbook of what the 11 team did to win it. We'll find out if the 11 advances next here on Speed. Tomorrow, All-Star Week on Speed slams into Charlotte with the biggest Fast Friday ever. Grab a seat and get comfortable because Speed's cranking with 12 consecutive hours of live Sprint Cup and Camping World Truck Series coverage you can't get anywhere else. NASCAR Fast Friday from Charlotte begins tomorrow, 10.30 Eastern. Only on speed. How about speed out of the 48 team? They've been able to cruise through their last two rounds. Save yourself, man. You got one more round. It's been disappointment on the competitors of the 48 team. Here is the two fastest teams in the early rounds. The 11 and the 88 go head to head. Let's see if the 11 can defend the three-peat possibility. Michael Hicks, the rear tire changer for this 11 team. Heath Cherry is carrying on the board. Look, look at the 11. A huge lead for the 11. It's going to be no contest. Now look who's cruising. Now look who's cruising. 22.869. They cruised across the line. If they're penalty free, it will be once again an 11 versus 48 matchup like Clean we saw the a year ago. The, the FedEx team celebrating already. They know they're in the final once again. Both teams clean from penalties, but it was a dominant performance by the FedEx 11 team. So what we're seeing here in the quarterfinals and the semifinals, very few mistakes. It's all in getting that car and making it through that 40-yard push. Everyone clean, no penalties by either team. And again, the surge of the 11 car. I mean, they came off the line and absolutely put almost a car link between them and the 88 before they got to halfway. But what I'm impressed about right now, the way Brandon Friedman right there was so smooth and did not make any mistakes to put his team in jeopardy changing that front tire. Again, Look at Denny it. saying, Wait that's it. You guys have got it. Save your energy. Let's go to Bob Dillman. Michael Hicks is the rear tire changer on this 11 bunch going for three in a row. But I want to know, are you guys worn out yet? We're, we're pretty exhausted. I'm not going to lie to you. But uh, our two big guys, they, they've been putting in a, some hard pushing here. So uh, they're back there rest now. Hopefully we'll be good to go for the finals. Michael Hicks and the boys of the 11 bunch, they got to be favorites going into this. And guys, think about it. These guys have been letting off before the finish line. These guys are pushing it for all they can, but they think they have a little left in the tank for this one. Here the final coming up. I'll tell you what, we got a lot more today on speed. The finals of the NASCAR Sprint Picker Challenge coming up next. 
It all comes down to the final race, the euphoria of being considered the best at your business. Who will be the best tonight in the 2012 Sprint Pit Crew Challenge? Well, the Mobile One past champions, again, looking for the three-peat, the FedEx Toyota team in 2010 and 2011, penalty free and dominant. But it is the 48 team once again. That is who the 11 team battled a year ago. They will battle them once again. Now look, look at the different philosophies. Nate Bowen with the FedEx team, he goes to the right front, but TJ Ford starts pushing from the rear when he gets to the 48 car. Yeah, different philosophies, and so far what's impressed me is they've been able to get all six guys of that 48 team to the car faster than anybody else all night long, and we're going to be interested to see how the 11 holds up against this challenge once more. Matt Clark. Guys, this has been four years in the making. Make no mistake about it. The, these guys recruit from colleges. They bring athletes in. It all comes down to this push right here. What you got, Bob? Well, here's a little nugget for you. Think about this. Jimmy Johnson's guys in the second round, a 22-6. In the fourth round, the semifinals, a 22-4. They're getting quicker by the night. And guess what? They lifted at the finish line. They could be even quicker. And the 48 team has had a little more rest. Plus, they're in the same lane that they were in the last round. The 11 teams a different lane. Lane choice. Now you force the 11 car possibly into a little bit different change this last time, and it could be the difference right now, guys. Fastest time tonight turned in by the 48 team 22.453 seconds. Who will be the 2012 champion? We're about to find out. 200th win on Saturday night could just be the first championship for Hendrick Motorsports here in this competition. TJ Majors, just like me. he's been the whole time, he's, he's got, got it going to the car. 48 car moves first. The 11th, a dead heat. The they push is on. They got everybody there. This no is to know the difference. They ain't kicked it in gear. Yeah. 48 surges, 22.239, the fastest time of the night. Let's if they're go. penalty free, they are the 2012 oh champion. Free. They're clean. They're clean. The 48 team can celebrate. They have won the pit crew challenge in 2012. 80. Right for those good boys. But that doesn't matter right now. They've got the first one for Hendrick Motorsports right now. You saw Dave Bowen there. They were trying to do the three-peat with that 11 team. And that's what you call laying it out on the line. They were just a little bit behind, and they were able to come through on that push. They got all the members of this pit crew to that car before the 11 did. We asked the question, who could dethrone the 11 team, a team, an organization that has no wins in this sprint pit crew challenge? All smiles. Jimmy Johnson, Tad Canals down there celebrating with the team. Let's go to Matt Clark. Guys, I'm here with Chad Knaus. Chad, he's trying to celebrate with his team right here. Chad, Chad, do me a favor. Put into words what it means for you guys to win this championship. I, there's been an awful lot of uh, an awful lot said about these guys. You know, we made the transition from what we had a couple years ago to these guys here who were <laughs> someone brand new and never even done their position before. There was a, there was a lot of ridicule, and man, these guys have stepped up to the challenge to be second last year. And to come back and be able to win it this year, I think it speaks volumes for what we're doing at Hendrick Motorsports to try to groom these young athletes. What exactly did you do? Talked about it four years ago. What what plan did you put in place? Well, we had uh, we had a couple years that we wanted to get this thing squared away and where we wanted it to be, and it's taken a couple years, and it's right where we want it. Now this plays big into tomorrow and this yeah. weekend. You get the first pit stall with all the segments going on. How are you going to utilize that, Chad? Well, I mean, hopefully we can get out there and qualify respectable with the low Chevrolet and. You know, we really think that we got a shot to go out there and win one of those first segments. And if that's the case, we'll be, be in pretty good shape for that last last 10 laps shootout. Bob, this is the first championship they've won. They've made an effort. They've been in the hunt all the time. Take it away, Bob. I tell you what, Nick, Nick Krizmanich is a tire changer on the 11 team. You've experienced the thrill of victory. What about the agony of defeat now? Well, it's uh, disappointing. We, uh, we went out and set out to do what we were going to do today. No mistakes. Got us all the way here to the finals. Uh, we just came up a little short. I'll tell you what, take a look. He broke a sweat down here. These boys were fighting hard, guys. Three tenths of a second separated the 48 and the 11 team. And I think that bottle of us talking about, you've got to get all six guys driving that car. And I think that's where the 11 car got beat. They didn't get everybody in position to take advantage of it. See the Jackman, TJ Ford, but what a phenomenal job this young man does getting down there to that 48 car. 
sprinting that 40 yard run to get to the car. He starts at the left front quarter panel. Look at this drive by the 48. One more time, all the way through. And the reactions of knowing that you are the champions in the pit crew challenge. We'll be back to hear from them in just a moment. Oh. Speed's presentation of the NASCAR Sprint Pit Crew Challenge is brought to you by Coors Light. A sport this hot needs a beer this cold. Frost brewed Coors Light, the world's most refreshing beer and the official beer of NASCAR by Sunoco, the official fuel of NASCAR. Follow Sunoco Racing on Facebook and by DirecTV. If you call yourself a sports fan, you gotta get DirecTV. Call 1 800 DirecTV. Hendrick Motorsports 1. Woo. That's all. Hendrick Motorsports one week ago. It's 200th Cup win. Champagne kills, I'll tell you that. But these boys finally get the pit crew championship here at the Time Warner Arena. And Calvin, woo, still spraying down here. I want to know what this means to you to get the first pit crew challenge championship for Hendrick Motorsports. So awesome. First off, I want to thank God. None of this is possible without him, but we got such a gr good group of guys here. And, uh, Henry's Motorsports is such a great place. It's so special, especially after getting a 200th win this week. It just adds on. And uh, we train so hard. We work hard. All these guys are so good. And uh, it just means the world to me. TJ, he says it means the world. How about to you and the rest of these boys? Same here. This, this team is absolutely amazing. I've been, this is my eighth year in the sport. And I tell you, I love these guys so much. We're such a tight group. Train every single day so hard for this. And, it's just fun to have, reap some rewards of all our hard work. You can see the emotion in all of their faces. They are $80,000 richer, Rick. Thanks, Bob. Very impressive night for the 48 team, guys. Awesome night. Cap awesome that 200 night. win. Didn't think it would get any better, Rick, but hey, it gets better each and every year. Well, Speed's exclusive coverage of NASCAR All-Star Week moves to the Charlotte Motor Speedway tomorrow for 12 consecutive hours beginning at 10.30 a.m. We'll finish the coverage with live Camping World Truck Series action at 7.30 p.m. And then Saturday, Speed is proud to present the NASCAR Sprint All-Star Race at 7 Eastern. For my broadcast partners, Larry McReynolds, Jeff Hanna, Bob Dilmer, and Matt Clark, I'm Rick Allen. Congratulations again to the 48 Lowe's Chevrolet team for winning the Pit Crew Challenge in 2012. Good night from Charlotte, North Carolina.